Well, with how popular trends are lately and the eventual probability of me covering just about every video game scenario, we were eventually going to be dipping our toes into these pixelated waters. I know I'm probably going to receive some flack from some angry adults for this only for 8 year olds, but hey, not every one of the why you wouldn't survive scenarios has to be a totally brutal or apocalyptic scenario, right? I mean, this does have survival elements, however rudimentary they may be. This week we are covering the Legos are too expensive, physics be damned, whoa they built that, 5 years in a server to die to RNG, no! the original no! background music that will either put you at peace or put you to sleep, half the players play to build stuff while the other half explore, the combat system is basically holding down the attack button and watching your blocky arms flail, the best battle royale bro, get millions of views by doing a parody of this game with a pop song, kids are running back from Fortnite in droves because Ninja went to Mixer, how to tame a horse, did you hear about Hero Run bro? <laughs> oh I see. So when does the game start? You are playing the game. This is the game. Game itself. This week we are telling you why you wouldn't survive Minecraft's overworld. <laughs> Now, while we usually and always have discussed in the Why You Wouldn't Survive series where a foreboding enemy of infection runs rampant through the human race in our world and modern day society, or in a post-apocalyptic world, unless you believe in some Minecraft fan theories or what the game theorist says, however, today let's take a step back and do what we did with Dead by Daylight and place ourselves as regular humans with normal human bodies into the realm of Minecraft and see just how we wouldn't fare well against the blocky elements. Basic elements of crafting will require a little bit more force from us besides just smacking with a blocky arm. Oh, and I'm going to be considering all aspects of the Minecraft universe in the hard difficulty. Because you know what? Life is hard, okay? So as any session of Minecraft starts, you are placed in a procedurally generated world with nothing but a map on you. You have no decision on where you will enter this world or what kind of environment or biome you will be treated to. And herein lies how everything will change dramatically dramatically, even from the get-go. Dependent on what is within a reasonable range from you will factor into how difficult your first few days will be. And like always, the most basic means of survival are food, water, and shelter. And there's plenty of water out there, but it's mostly seawater, and it's going to be a little hard to get that. But the food and shelter parts are uh, somewhat attainable here, but with certain caveats similar to our own world. Learning to farm, build a shelter, procure meat and seeds, and remaining relatively safe will be the most basic needs and means of your survivability, but most importantly, to be able to eat and sleep. Luckily enough, the greatest difference in the internal anatomy outside of a cubic skeleton and outer framework, a normal human body will not starve at the exponential rate that a Minecraft one would. While a Minecraft persona could easily starve and have their health depleted in less than a day, humans typically can survive weeks or even months without food, despite feeling a mite peckish. So having reserves of food would not be depleted nearly as fast enough as a typical playthrough as an in-game character. But as a human being, that's about the only positive we would have to eating pixelated food. Attaining meat, cooking, harvesting, and farming that food is a whole nother story. If you're trying to harvest materials like wood for tools and shelter making, well, punching the hell out of a tree or the solid ground, it's gonna yield some results, but it's, it's gonna take a lot. Hell, give it a try right now. Go on, go outside, give it a try, punch a tree. Hell, I'll give it a try. <laughs> uh, uh, now you're probably saying, but it, it's, it's the Minecraft world. Why are you applying real world logic to a fictional game universe and its space? Well, welcome to Why You Wouldn't Survive and where the Minecraftians tend to punch wood to get their resources. We have to discuss the differences in a human, and I guess I will say Minecraftian here on out. The denizens of Minecraft have a lot of properties about them that give them advantages in their home world. Punching a number of cubic objects gives them a smaller version of that substance in order to place in other areas, like sand, dirt, wood, and more. These miniature versions can then be placed in the personal inventory of the Minecraftian. While not vast, it's a considerable chunk considering 64 of a given object can be placed in a single stack within their personal storage. The Minecraftian also has the capability to interact with objects from a wider distance without technically touching them, whether it's punching leaves or having objects gravitate towards them. You're going to have to actually touch something and you're going to have to actually pick stuff up. The Minecraftian also 
also generally just has an overall health gauge to meter out how close they are to dying, so all incoming damage and bodily harm has one general effect on the blocky body, no matter where it's hit, lessening the hearts, and hearts can be restored with potions or slowly recovering with a full stomach. Whereas with humans, if we get shot by an arrow, we could suffer from internal bleeding. If we fall a great height, we can have a broken leg or shattered kneecaps. If we are sliced by an iron sword, we will probably be gutted open. You get the gist. And no amount of cake or carrots is gonna mend those wounds. You will die without proper medical treatment. And that leads to the greatest difference between the blockhead and the acorn head, is the fact that, well, if you die in any way, you will not respawn at the level Last bed you slept in. It's just darkness. Unless you're Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, electrocuted, and burned. Every morning I wake up without a scratch on me, not a dent in the fender. I am an immortal. Or if you're doing one of those challenges in Minecraft where it's a one life per server rule. Now, so back to the world at hand, a human hand, you're actually gonna have to deal with some major damage to your hands in order to create enough wood blocks to create useful items like pickaxes, swords, shovels, and hoes. I was debating whether you would have to apply legitimate real world applications to this wood in order to make it usable lumber, but we are just gonna stick with the whole human in this world situation. So yeah, punching in a number of times will yield the tiny little blocks of wood results, but with mangled hands by the end of the day. So expect to see some callous knuckles and some possibly broken fingers, but it will be necessary to do so in order to make your tools, weapons, and home. I mean, you could make your home out of dirt, but punching the ground is going to be equally as strenuous. Managing stacks upon stacks of these resources will be a bit difficult as well, especially since backpacks aren't really craftable in this realm. So you better be sporting some dad level cargo shorts to stow away everything you find to bring back to your home. Building your house and placing it will be much easier than how things would occur in our realm of reality. Just slap the right amount of wood in the right place and you're golden to have a place of safety. However, you're gonna need to make a crafting table to get this all started. And well, while that's easy for Steve, a regular human may not have that kind of automatic mental ingenuity to just whip a table up on the spot. I would say you would have to go to a pre-made one in a village since the villagers there can construct these types of objects, but that would be severely limiting you and your capabilities if you had to go to a village to build something every single time. So we'll give the person the ability to make crafting tables this one time to, we're gonna let it slide. With the pickaxe, sword, and shovel, and hoe at your disposal, you won't have to worry about breaking your hands anymore and can pretty much take the world on much like you would in a regular game of Minecraft, whether it be mining for resources, farming, killing enemies. However, when you do get an animal, don't eat raw meat. Make an oven and cook it, lest ye die of E. coli, or any number of square-shaped bacteria. So you make your tools, make a garden, kill some animals, get some meat, mine a bit of resources making sure not to go into the deep underground, you set out on many expeditions into the world and possibly find villages to trade and haggle with its villagers, who are all peaceful even if you attack them. You may go through desert or tundra biomes that can take their accumulative heat or cool toll on you, but at the end of the day, you make a bed and begin to set up a place you can call home to rest and eat. When it comes to your humble abode, making sure there are no points of easy entry for mobs, but keeping things well lit near your home's proximity will be your primary concern. Using torches, natural lights, or anything that can keep things lit, fam! Thankfully, things like coal and charcoal in this universe can be used indefinitely on lighting sources, and these can prevent the spawn of mobs close to your home, as the darkness will always bring the greatest challenge to your survival. The true danger and test of your survival skills come when night falls or while spelunking into the caverns, tunnels, and caves of the world, when a majority of Minecraft's relatively fearsome and deadly creatures come out or stay in and play. While it's not totally necessary to your survival to ever have to go into anything underground, night will always be a pervasive part of your everyday cycle. Many enemies of the world will thrive in the dark, and most will burst into flames under the sun, and will most likely lead to your downfall. You will need to be proficient in how you use a sword instead of just wildly swinging it around like a LARPing weeb, using a bow and arrow because it's more than holding down aim and hitting fire. It takes a lot of strength to pull back a bow to shoot an arrow with enough force to kill something and also to even be able to hit your target. That even takes more training. Holding up a shield 
won't automatically make you immune to all incoming attacks from the front unless you position it in just the right way. And that's even if you have the strength to hoist this up in front of you in the first place. Fighting in the open world will be much more difficult as well, since eating apples won't heal a flesh wound. But if you could procure a potion, magic tends to have healing properties that go beyond our understanding, so you may be alright if you find a potion of healing or two. So let's discuss the mobs of the Minecraft world and what they can do to a human body. Zombies? Well, crap. Here I was thinking I was done with zombie scenarios, but you'll be running into these rotting buggers quite frequently during the night as they try and slowly come at you to beat you down, either wearing their ragged clothing or the armor of whatever poor SOB fell to them before. They give off growls and grunts so they are very noticeable and can see and go after you from a far distance and can break down your wooden doors with continued attacks so good luck sleeping tonight. They have the capability of infecting and turning peaceful villagers into more zombies in sieges upon villages, making any potential bartering and well near companionship null and void. While curing the inflicted is possible, it's more than likely you won't have a golden apple or weakness potion handy to do so. Children and babies can also be infected and turned undead, and much like the Dead Space Universe, infantile deadites can be much more troublesome, considering baby zombies are 30% faster with the same attacking power as their adult counterparts. Much like zombies in other franchises, they aren't so formidable alone, but in numbers can be quite a nuisance as you're running away from other enemies and they come at you in groups of two, three, or even more. But thankfully, you don't have to worry about getting bitten by these zombies. All they want to do is smack you to death. Depending on what harsh environment they are part of will force them to adapt, becoming something called the husk in a desert environment, which are zombies immune to the sun and are able to roam during the daytime and cause you to starve quicker if they're able to hit you. Or the drowned, who can exist underwater and rise from the murky deep and sometimes even wield tridents to toss at survivors while these zombies can rope about underwater during the day as well. They can't burst into flames like a regular zombie in the sunlight if they stay underwater. And regular zombies can become the drowned if they stay underwater for elongated periods of time. Just don't go eating the rotten flesh. You may be desperate to eat any kind of meat you can get your hands on, but if something is rotten, I would definitely not recommend eating eating it as a living, breathing human being. But they aren't the only undead ghouls walking the flat earth, and these next guys certainly have a bone to pick with you. Skeletons don't rely on beating you to death like the zombie counterparts do. Rather, they prefer archery to dispose of you from afar, and they can be pretty damn accurate despite not having eyes or hands for hand-eye coordination. Being pierced by a high-velocity arrow as a human can be fatal if it hits just the right spot on your body. The threat can be even more dangerous as some can be found riding skeletal horses to ride and hunt down prey on. Unless you have tamed your own horse, you may want to get ready for a fight, as outrunning them may be out of the question. If you're in a snowy biome, cooler variants dubbed the strays will appear. However, the only real difference is that their arrows can cause you to move even slower, meaning you're going to be an easy target for these arrows that are coming at you at high speeds. And just in case you were considering becoming an insomniac due to a fear of being attacked in your sleep, well, besides being sleep deprived and going insane from lack of sleep, the world of Minecraft will also summon phantoms to dispose of you if you do not sleep within a three day span swooping down on your delirious body to finish you off under the night sky. So between zombies knocking at your door and spoopy ghosts wailing about, good luck getting some shut-eye. But as day breaks, you won't necessarily be in the clear. Of course, some of the mob will be hostile towards you and be able to survive during the day. And the most notable creature is the design mistake himself. Creepers, the iconic baddies of the franchise, have an explosive personality. And I'm not saying that because they look like a bunch of censored Hulk dicks. While they freely roam the world at large, the creeper can roam around quite silently and can get the drop on you. Because if a human comes within a certain proximity of them, we'll begin to hiss, and eventually if you stay near them long enough, we'll blow you to kingdom come. Pot that's gonna kill you. It's just basically a walking, living, breathing landmine. And on top of all that, if you run into one during an electrical storm, they can absorb the power of a lightning bolt, get charged and become imbued with this aura and be glowing like some kind of super saiyan in blue, and if they blow up, it's going to be even more of a gigantic explosion. So if you're hiding somewhere, so if you try to run away from this 
blue aura beast, well, I don't think you're going to have enough time to get away from that gigantic blast. So whether you're swinging wildly at an enemy, casually journeying through a tight corridor, or just completely unaware of your environment, there may be a sudden hiss that will have your life flashing before your eyes as your body is blown to bits in a dynamite style. Speaking of eyes, you may want to watch where you're looking with the haunting group of creatures standing quite tall, dark and gruesome, known as the Endermen. Keeping your gaze upon them won't immediately cause a confrontation, but after looking away, they can teleport around you and strike. Their speed and means of travel are a hellacious danger and fighting back would be difficult considering they teleport out of the way from projectiles like bow and arrows and trying to get up close to hit them without the advantage of long distance Steve melee hits will ultimately have you in the Slenderman reboot's grasp by eviscerating you or choking you to death. The last thing you'll see will be the infinite void of his body. If you think getting a height advantage over the monsters of the world could work by setting up a top a high incline, well, larger than life spiders can also appear, and if you got arachnophobia, you're probably just going to die from the sight of a giant spider. Able to ascend mostly pure vertical surfaces to slowly approach and leap at you with bared fangs. They have the capability of being able to either regenerate health, that means they're going to be healing a lot quicker, being quicker than most spiders, being mostly invisible, or have their bites be just a bit more fearsome with enhanced strength. They can also weave sticky and ensnaring webs in closed spaces, and if you accidentally wander into them, them, well, you're going to be heavily slowed down trying to get through these thickets while the spider speeds its way through the webs to make you into a quick meal. Their cave dwelling counterparts, the cave spiders, are similar but can squeeze through tiny spaces easier and can inject a poisonous venom into your system. And logistically speaking, if venom seeps into your bloodstream, it's probably going to shut your heart down without proper medical treatment. Instead of putting you within just a breath of one hit of death, you are going to die from that venom. There are also other remedial creatures like the silverfish and the slime that under the right circumstances could outnumber you even though they are small. That's if you hit the slime enough enough to where it separates into even smaller pieces. Zombie pigmen can also spawn but will be relatively docile towards you, unless you accidentally give them a good smack or cut like my buddy Kate did here. In which case, they will pursue you with a golden sword and call upon their nearby brothers to vanquish you. If you ever thought about dying to a zombie pig, well this is the universe that it's gonna be your untimely doing. If you somehow survive an interaction with any of these creatures, you're probably gonna be banged up and bruised. And since food isn't going to be the way to heal yourself, because that's just not how a human body works, you're going to need to get the only viable way of medical treatment in this universe for humans, and that is potions. And unless you get the proper ingredients, you may have to haggle with villagers to get a little something something. And I'm not saying some sexy time with these squid words. Oh no, he's hot! Heading into the villages to heal, stock up, or chat with the discount Squidwards won't always be a walk in the park. If you try to attack them, any number of normally docile creatures that they own could come to their defense, like iron golems, snow golems, and wolves. But that's if you choose to be a dick. Despite sometimes being invaded by zombie hordes, raids can also occur by the not-so-docile illagers. That's right, illagers, not villagers, illagers. Basically villagers, but with a great outlook on life, consisting of a number of enemy types. And to either patrols of up to five or will stand guard in towers called pillager outposts or participate in raids. Evokers can show up in mansions but will also aid in raids conjuring summoning spells to attack you with either fangs attacking you from beneath your feet in vertical roads potentially impaling you from beneath your ass calling for reinforcements changing the color of sheep and spawning in vexes to fight for them, which these vexes are ghoulish winged spirits that will phase through most surfaces to cut at you, making hiding behind most objects a foolish endeavor. You could try hitting them back, but more than likely, you will have the rest of the illagers swarming at you. They are gonna be attacking you while you're distracted. They can die out as the spell wears off after a few minutes, but all it takes for a phasing ghost with a sword is a few minutes to get a good swipe at you, cutting your head clean off. Sometimes as the pillagers and evoker approach a raid, they can be seen riding giant ravagers, a veritable squidward-faced giant bull that is capable of steamrolling survivors and plowing through man-made structures with ease. So you're facing being potentially gored by their pretty sharp horns. And if you try to jump out of the way as these beasts charge, you could very well leave yourself open to enemy fire from the pillager's bow and arrow or the fangs of the evoker. Either way, you are pretty screwed in this scenario. Vindicators can also be deceitful in the fact that they seem to be peaceful villains 
villagers, but we'll whip out an axe and go full Johnny mode on you if you get too close and we'll chop you to bits and celebrate your death in a very uh, way. And last of the illagers are the loners of the group that can prove to be dangerous on their own. The witch. Whoa, 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 not you. Put your clothes back on, girl. We're talking about this guy who throws his own potions at you to either heavily slow you down, poison you, weaken your body, or just outright burn you alive with a potion of harming, or all of the above if he could do it back to back on you. Other animals within the world could also put an end to your attempt at survival, like if you were to go for a swim, merely touching a puffer fish would severely poison you, or their bigger brothers, the guardians that you could find in underwater temples, can project spikes from the body that can impale you, or they can shoot freaking laser beams from their eyes. So whether it's land, sea, or air, you and your life will be at a dare. Now I usually discuss critical points on how to fight back against any of these creatures. You could potentially create an iron or snow golem to help you defend a base that you have made, or you could domesticate an animal to protect you, but the mobs of Minecraft all take in relative damage, meaning that no matter where you hit them, it all accumulates into their overall health all the same, unless you are in the air and score a critical hit. But going for headshots isn't necessary, which is strange to say considering every other instance of zombies mandates to shoot them in the head from what I've talked about in the past. You're gonna have to jump around like a maniac, have a ton of stamina, and wear yourself out if you're wanting to land a good shot or a big hit with your melee weapons. Trying to go for an arm to sever it, trying to hit the head, trying to do anything Thing that has to do with the anatomy against these guys, it's not going to make a lick of difference no matter where you hit. You're just going to have to be successfully making those shots on the body and waiting for them to turn into that red aura and then poofing into whatever item they can give out. Scrapping with any of these monsters and baddies can result in some noticeable loot for salvaging, but honestly, your chances of surviving a majority of encounters with most of these creatures will probably have you ending up being dead, unless you are proficient at archery, swordsmanship, or or brandishing a shield, can whip up the miracle elixirs that are potions of healing to mend your wounds, and have a high pain tolerance to whatever may strike you. And believe me, a bow and arrow impaling your body, getting a tooth to really rip through your insides, being just meleeed to death by a zombie, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of pain, and a lot of you probably either will be going home crying to mama or talking to your counselor about what, I mean, you're in the Minecraft world, so you're not really gonna have any of that, and I don't see your hours of playing as Steve or VR Minecraft working out too well for you, except for what you could possibly know about constructing at a crafting table, as that rule is the only one that we could bend that we talked about at the beginning. So we have covered that you're basically a human throughout all of this, feeling every punch you make, every fall you experience and knees you break, and every breath you take. Any and all injuries will need proper medical treatment, and you're not going to have the proper medical supplies. And eating steak, well, that's not going to heal you. Whether or not Hank Hill will have you believing that. Being able to properly fortify your home with fencing and torches to keep the spawns further away from where you live, and iron golems to protect your homestead, or the elements of the night that could descend upon you if you don't, lest ye die in your sleep, and any kind of creature that you may be surprised by in your adventure. But if you think you can handle it all, be my guest. But it's all a lot harder than it looks with your real body. Now, usually in the why you wouldn't survive scenarios that I discuss, I really go over the story first. But in the Minecraft universe, there's not much story to it all besides fan theories and hypothesis. But the main focus of everything Minecraft is driving you to fight the Ender Dragon by procuring resources from the Nether and the End, both literal hellscapes of this realm, but that can only be achievable if you can descend into the underground of the world to get stuff like coal, iron, and the most sought after material, diamonds, and you will need diamonds to get refined obsidian to make a nether portal. But beyond what the overworld and its intricate biomes, tunnel systems, dungeons, and mines have to offer, we won't be getting into the subject matter of the nether or the end, as those are wide and expansive enough to possibly mandate their own future videos. But as for now, that's about it for today. If you want to see the Why You Wouldn't Survive series go deeper into the nether, you'll have to let me know in the comments. And if you're thinking I'm a sellout for doing Minecraft while it's gotten a resurgence in popularity, call me out on it. I'd love to see that in the comments too. Like, comment, sub, all of that, and be one of these fine people on this list here by donating to my Patreon or during my live streams to support me and the channel. I'll be at PAX West at the end of the month, dressed as Ellis from Left 4 Dead. So if you're there, come say hi to me. Anyways, if you want to check out more stuff, click one of these links or boxes here. And until next
next time, I'm Zach S, aka Wild Such Gaming. Stay well!